7.3 multivariate linear systems and row operations. We're going to start off by using elimination to solve systems of three variables. So on this first example, we have an equation with three variables, an equation with two variables, and an equation with three variables. So our goal here is going to be to make it to where we have two equations that have only two variables, the same two variables in it. And so right now we have one equation that has two variables. It has an x and a z. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first and the last equation here and we're going to say, well, what could I do with these two equations so that I could make it have the same letters as this middle one? Well, that means that I would eliminate the y's. Conveniently, that's the one we should probably pick anyway because the, in, the y's would eliminate uh, really easily here. So I'm going to write out those two equations over here to the side. And I'm going to add them together, which is going to eliminate the y's. So I finish adding together and get 10x plus 1z equals 14. So now I have two equations that have x's and z's. So I can put those two equations together and say, OK, let's eliminate either x or z. Well, in this situation, the better variable to eliminate would be z because it's already set up to eliminate. So let's get rid of our z's. We get 7x equals 14. Divide by 7 on each side. And we get x equals 2. So we need to know what x, y, and z are, and we know that x equals 2. So what we do is we take this answer and we plug it into any equation that we've had that has only two variables in it. So I could do the negative 3x minus z equals 0, but I put it 2 where x is, and that gives me negative 6 minus z equals 0. I can add z over to the right side, and I get z equals negative 6. Okay, so now I know two letters. I would need to know what y is. So to do that, I have to go all the way back to one of my first two equations, or any of the, any equation that has three variables, and I have to plug in both of these numbers into it. So I w I'm just going to pick the first one. Neither of them look like they'd be easier to deal with. So 6 times 2 minus 5y minus a negative 6. Well, that's a plus 6 if I'm minusing a negative 6. So I need to do 6 times 2, which is 12, plus 6 is 18. Then subtract 18. So negative 5y equals negative 20. Divide by negative 5. And I get y equals a 4. And so then the way we write our answer as a is as a three-dimensional point, x, y, z, so 2, comma, 4, comma, negative 6. And that's where um, systems with three variables come in, is that we can actually graph these in three-dimensional space, um, which is kind of hard to do on a two-dimensional paper. But um, you could graph these, and it's talking about if I have three lines in, th in a three-dimensional space, where is their point of intersection? So let's do another one. And this time, we don't have. Um, an equation that only has two variables. So what we want to do is we want to pick either x, y, or z to eliminate twice. Um, so looking at this, really all of these are all of these various variables are pretty easy um, to eliminate. We could we could pick the x's and we would just have to change two of the equations to have negatives. We could pick the y's and we'd have to multiply at least one equation by negative two. We pick the z's, multiply by 2 and by 3. Um, but let's just go with the x's. So I'm going to take the first equation as it is. And then I'm going to multiply the second equation by a negative 1 so that my x's will eliminate. Negative x minus y minus 3z equals negative 14. Now I'm going to eliminate. So what actually happens here, if I look, is I was only trying to eliminate my x's, but I also eliminated my y's, which um, 
is a good thing, I guess. I guess it makes it a little bit of an easier problem if that happens. Z equals 3. We got to that point sooner than we would have if we had had another y here. Um, now let's do the first equation with the last equation. So we're going to have to multiply the last equation by a negative 1. So x plus y plus 2z equals 11 minus x minus 2y plus z equals negative 5. So we need to eliminate And so now we have an equation with two variables. If we had ended up with something on our first one, like y minus c equals negative 3, then we would have to do elimination again, because we would have to get rid of either y or z. But since we actually got rid of both of these, and we got z equals 3, then I can put that 3 in, and I can go ahead and start solving for my variables. so that y equals 3. And then I take z and y and plug it into one of my first three equations. So the first one looks pretty good to me. x plus 3 plus 2 times 3 equals 11. So x plus 3, 3 plus 6 is 9. So x equals 2. So my point is 2, 3, 3. So that's the first way that we can solve systems with three variables. The next thing we want to look at is um, using matrices and row operations to figure out how to, um, or to solve a system. And so this actually really comes in handy if we're doing more than three, because elimination is not really that bad if you have three variables. I mean, obviously it's not like probably what you want to spend all of your time doing, but it works out pretty nicely most of the time. But just think if you had four or more variables that could get really, really tedious really fast. So we have these row operations that we can use. The first thing we want to talk about is what an augmented matrix and a coefficient matrix are. And, um, and so let's actually start with the coefficient matrix. And I have this system here. From example two, we're going to write the coefficient matrix for that. Well, coefficients are the numbers in front of our variables. So the coefficient matrix simply has the numbers in front of our variables. Since we have three variables and we have three equations, that's going to make it a square matrix, a 3 by 3. Okay, So that's our coefficient matrix um, that we'll be using in a little bit. Okay, The augmented matrix takes all of the numbers we have. So we don't just have the coefficients 1, 1, 2. Um, but then we also put what that equals, and I personally like to draw a line right here, and a lot of teachers do, but your book doesn't, um, to show that that's where the equal sign is. So then I would do 1, 1, 3, and then that equals 14, 1, 2, negative 1, 5. Okay, so that's, simp that's just how you would write a coefficient matrix or an augmented matrix. The augmented is because um, when you augment something, you like add something to it. So we, we took the coefficient matrix and we added a column here at the end for the right-hand sides. Now, we're going to talk about two forms that we can get our matrix into. One is called row echelon form. And you, there's like specific things over here, one through three, about what it means to be in row echelon form. But basically, your goal, if it tells you to get it in row echelon form, is you want this diagonal right here to be one, ones across, like this diagonal. And underneath the diagonal over here, we want zeros. Okay, so the first element in each row um, it, that is besides 0 is 1. We have 1, 1, and 1. And in front of the 1s, we have zeros. Reduced row echelon form takes it a step farther. And we still have diag the diagonal of 1. We have these zeros here, but we also have zeros above the diagonal. So that's reduced row echelon form. So depending on what question they ask us, these are our two options that we're trying to get to. 
And the way we can do that is we're going to take our augmented matrix for our system and we're going to perform row operations on them. And there are three row operations, which is down here at the bottom, that we're allowed to do to a matrix. The first thing we're allowed to do is interchange any two rows. So if you start off, and we, we actually label, like we actually are going to end up talking about this as row 1, row 2, and row 3. So something that we're allowed to do, for example, is interchange two rows. So I can switch row 1 and row 2 around so that this row is actually the one on top and that the top one is actually the one in the middle. And I can do that with any of my rows. I can just make them switch places. But all of the numbers have to stay in the same order that they, like, column wise, left to right, as they were before. The second thing I can do is multiply all elements of a row by a non-zero real number. So um, a lot of times that's going to be a situation where we're trying to get a 1. We can multiply by something to get a 1. We have to do that to the whole row. Um, and the third one is that I can add a multiple of, run, of one row to any other row. So those are the three things we're going to do to our, our to get our matrices to row echelon form or reduced row echelon. Okay, we are going to solve the system of equations by finding a row echelon form for the augmented matrix. So this is a system that um, has three variables, three equations. Let's first start off by writing the augmented matrix. 3, 7, negative 11, 44, and 1, 2, negative 3, 12, 4, 9, negative 13, 53. Okay, we are allowed to do three different things to make our, our rows in our matrix. We can switch rows around, we can multiply a row by some number, or we can multiply a row by a number and add it to another row. And so what is important here is what our goal is. For regular row echelon form, not reduced row echelon form, but for the regular row echelon form, this is our goal. We want a diagonal of ones with zeros underneath our diagonals, and then all of the rest of the numbers can be numbers. So this is where we're trying to get to. This is where we're starting. So to get to do this properly, we need to start at the top of this, where our one is, and then work our way down. And so we basically do it a column at the time. For our first column, we need to get the one first. That's going to help us to get these zeros. For the second column, we get the one first. That's going to help us get the zero at the bottom. And then last, we're going to get the last one. So here, if I want a one in this spot, I could multiply everything in this row by one third. And it would give me a one right here. But then it would also give me some fractions. And I'd have to deal with this, the that, the rest of the problem. So instead, Let's switch row 1 and row 2, because row 1 has a 1 in the first column. And if we make them switch places, that's an awful R. If we make them switch places, then that'll be much easier than having to deal with those fractions. The notation to do this is we write row 1, and then we put a double-sided arrow, uh, or a double-arrowed line, whatever you want to call it, and then row 2. Because we're telling whoever's looking at this, I switched the rows for row 1 and row 2. So I'm going to write 1, 2, negative 3, 12. And then now I write this row, 3, 7, negative 11. And then the third row I didn't change, so I leave it alone. Okay, so if the, there is a 1 in the first column, but it's not in the first row, your first step should always be to try to switch those rows around um, so that you may end up with less fractions than you otherwise would. Now we need to get a 0 right here where this 3 is. And so I can't subtra just subtract 3. That doesn't work. I can't say, oh, let's subtract everything in this row by 3. That, do that doesn't work. We could try multiplying by something, but we'd have to multiply by 0. Then everything would be 0, so that doesn't work. What we're going to do is we're going to take row 1, we're going to multiply it by a negative 3 and then add it to row 2. Here's how we write that. Negative 3 times row 1 plus row 2. 
Okay, and so what I find helpful to do is actually mul multiply this row by negative 3 and write it up above it. So that would be a negative 3, negative 6, 9, and negative 36. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add it to the second row. Now when we do this, the first row doesn't actually change. We're using the first row, but we're not actually changing it in any way for the next matrix we write. Um, but for our second row, we are changing it. Negative 3 plus 3 gives us 0. Negative 6 plus 7 gives us 1. 9 plus a negative 11 gives me negative 2. And negative 36 plus 44 gives me 8. Then I would have the row 3 is the same because we haven't messed with it yet. Okay, so we got our next thing done. We've got a 0 underneath our 1. Now we need a 0 underneath that 0. So anytime we're getting zeros, it's going to look something like this. We're going to multiply a row by something and add it to the row we want a 0 in. So I would multiply the first row again by a negative 4, because negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So negative 4 row 1 plus row 3. Okay, and so row 3 is the only row that's going to change here. I'm just using row 1. So I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 4 and just have a note up here that tells me what those are for while I'm for while I'm adding. Cuz and basically that's so because the more things you try to do in your head, the more likely you are to mess up somewhere. Negative 8 plus 9 is 1. 12 times negative 13 is negative 1. Negative 48 plus 53 is 5. So we're done with our first column. Now we have to we have to do this kind of strategically to make sure that we don't mess up that first column. Um, so the next and by doing what I told you down here, you'll be able to make sure you don't mess up that first column. You won't mess up what you've already done. We want a 1 in the middle, which it's already there. So we don't need to actually do a row operation to get that 1 in the middle. Um, then we want a 0 on the bottom middle. So I want a 0 right here. Well, there's a 1 right here that yeah, basically we're always going to use the row we just got a, a 1 in. So because there's a 1 in row 2, I'm going to multiply this row by a negative 1 and add it to row 3. So this will be a negative 1, this will be a positive 2, this will be a negative 8. Only the third row is changing because we're just using row 2, we're not actually changing it. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 2 minus 1 is 1, negative 8 plus 5 is 3, a negative 3, and close our bracket. So we're done with the second column because we've got a 1 and a 0. Our third column we actually are done with as well because it already has a 1 there. So we would re write this now as a system of equations. Again, x plus 2y, and we're just putting our x's, y's, and our z's back in with this. Minus 3z equals 12, y minus 2z equals 8, and z equals negative 3. So let's plug these back in uh, to, to get our x and our y, because we know z is negative 3. So y minus 2 times negative 3 equals 8. That would be y plus 6 equals 8. So y equals 2. Plug y and z back into this top equation here. So x plus 2 times 2 minus 3 times negative 3 equals 12. So 4 plus 9 is 13. So I subtract the 13 from both sides and x equals negative 1. So this gives me negative 1 comma 2 comma negative 3. Now let's do a reduced row echelon form for the augmented matrix. So this time our goal is slightly different. This time we want 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then these should be numbers. 
So um, that's just going to mean that we have to do a little bit more work than what we did the last time, which, hey, no big deal. Well, why does more work matter? So 1, 2, negative 1, 3, 3, 7, negative 3, 12, 2, negative 4, 3, negative 5. Okay, so there's our first matrix. Now, uh, just like before, we're going to start with the 1, and then we're going to go down, and then we'll be done with this column. Then we still want to get the 1 in the middle, and then get the zeros. And it doesn't really matter which 0 in a column you get first. Then we want to start with that 1, and then we want to get those zeros. So I already have a 1 in the first spot. That's good. Now I need to get zeros in these two spots. So I'm going to do, to get row 2, I need to do negative 3 times row 1 plus row 2. And then um, you could, if you felt confident enough, you could actually do two operations at once, as long as it's just when we're trying to get zeros. In no other way should you do more than one operation at the same time. It's not going to help. But we want both of these to be zeros, so we can do those at the same time. So negative 2 times row 1 plus row 3. But if you do it this way, you have to make sure that you don't get confused. Um, the first row is staying the same. I want to do negative 3 times the first row. And I want to add it to the row 2. So that's going to give me 0, 1, 0, 3. Now I want to do negative 2 times row 1. So either like mark this out, what you had before, or erase it, or just put it in a different spot, I guess, so that you can tell the difference. Negative 2 times row 1 would be negative 2, negative 4, 2, and negative 6. So that would give me 0, 0, 5, and I'm sorry, this is not 0, this is negative 8, because those are both negatives. Negative 8. Negative 4 plus negative 4 is negative 8. 2 plus 3 is 5. Negative 6 minus 5 is negative 11. Okay, so we've got our first column done. Now we need to go to the second column. And actually, we already have a 1 right here in the very middle. Um, and so we don't have to get that 1. Now we want to get the 0 in row 1 and row 3. So to get the 0 up here, I would do negative 2 times row 2 plus row 1. To get the 0 here, I would do positive 8 times row 2 plus row 3. So this last thing is always the row that you're trying to change. Um, so our next matrix, we would multiply row 2 by negative 2. So this is still going to be 0. This will be negative 2. This will be 0, negative 6. So my first row, if I add those together, is 1, 0, negative 1, negative 3. The middle row does not change. And then um, now we want to do the last row. So I'm not using those numbers anymore. I want to do 8 times row 2. So 8, that's not 8, that's 0. 8, 0, 24. So I want to add that to row 3. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 8 minus 8 is 0. 0 plus 5 is 5. 24 minus 11 is 13. Okay, so we're done with the second column. We've got 0, 1, 0. Now I want to get a 1 right here at the bottom right of my coefficient part of my matrix. To get a 1 here, I have to multiply by the reciprocal of this, which is 1 fifth. So I'm going to do 1 fifth times row 3. So everything else stays the way it was. But here, well, if I multiply these by 1 fifth, it's still 0. 1 fifth times 5 is 1. Then I'm going to do 13 times 1 fifth. And because these are matrices, um, Unless you have like a one-third or something, as long as it's a decimal that ends, I'm okay with you putting a decimal. Like this would be a 
2.6 because fractions can be kind of difficult to deal with in matrices so 2.6 now I only have one thing left I need a 0 in this top right and I'm going to use row 3 which I just got a 1 in to get that and since these are opposite signs and they're both 1's I actually just need to add those two rows together so I'm going to take row 3 and I'm going to add it to row 1 so remember row 1 is the one that we're changing and so that's the thing that goes last in our notation so if I add those rows together 1 plus 0 is 1 0 plus 0 is 0 negative 1 plus 1 is 0 and negative 3 plus 2.6 is negative 0.4 my other rows stayed the same as what they were and because this is in reduced row echelon form look the only thing that has a value over here is my x this is saying x equals negative 0.4 this is saying that y for the middle row equals 3 z for my last row that's 2.6 so this is the point negative 0.4 3 comma 2.6 so there is row echelon form and ele elementary row operations. Um, now we want to talk about solving systems with inverse matrices. So what we can do is we can split a system of equations into three matrices like this. So this was actually an earlier example that we had. And what we can do is we can split it up into its coefficients. So 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 1, 2, negative 1. This x right here is a multiplication sign. Um, we times that by the letters we have, x, y, and z, and that equals what we have right here, the right-hand side of our equations, 11, 14, and 5. Now, if you actually go back and multiply these together, you get the left side of the system, because when we multiply, um, we do this one and this one, plus this one and this one, plus this one and this one, which is this. Okay, so um, it does actually work out that, that it, these, this is really um, this system of equations. Now, what we can do then is we can call a coefficient matrix A, the variable matrix X, the right side matrix B, which gives us this equation AX equals B. Now, if I literally just had an equation AX equals B, where I was saying A and B are numbers, what would I do to solve that equation for X? I would divide by A on both sides and I would get B divided by A, whatever that is, for whatever my situation is. But I can't divide matrices. The, all I can do is I can add them, I can um, multiply them by a scalar, I can, I can, that's about it. I can multiply them and I, and I can, I can multiply two matrices together, I can add matrices, and I can multiply by a scalar. So instead, then what we're going to do is we're going to say X equals A inverse times B. Okay, and when you and we're going to use the calculator for this, um, for the most part, because of the matrices that we're finding the inverse of are going to be three by three, or more. And so, I use A inverse and I times that by matrix B. So um, let's do that. Let's set that up with this system of equations we've got. So you're going to go to your calculator. And here's what we need. We need the matrix menu, which is right here. You press second, x to the negative 1, and you go over and you edit one of your matrices. So I can I can edit matrix A. And mine already has a 3 by 3. If you don't have any matrices in your in yours, you're going to have to type in 3, enter, 3, enter, and you're going to have to change it so that it gives you a 3 by 3 matrix. Matrix A is the coefficient matrix. So let's put in 1, enter, and see how it goes across the top like that one one two and definitely check to make sure as you're going along that you're entering it correctly that it actually goes to the next uh, row when you want it to and that kind of thing okay but here I have my coefficient matrix now I want to go in and put in a matrix B for this right hand side so go to second matrix and let's go over to the right to edit and down to B we're going to put in, this is a, this has three rows and one column, so three by one. And that gives us 11, 14, and 5. Okay, now we want 
if you're trying to get out of a matrix, you need to do second mode so that it quits. Um, you can't just like press clear and get out of it. We want to type into our calculator x equals a to the negative first times b. So you're going to go back to second matrix and see it says names. We're going to press enter and it's going to put matrix A right here in our um, normal part of our calculator. This is the inverse button that I have right here. X to the negative 1 will find the inverse for us. Then we're going to multiply that by matrix B. So I'm going to go back to second matrix and I'm going to come down here to B and I'm going to press enter. This is going to do the inverse of A times B. I press enter. It gives me 2, 3, 3. And so what that means is that X equals, and X was this matrix. Where did my pin go? X was this matrix with X, Y, Z, and it equals 2, 3, 3. And so that means I can write this answer as a point. I can write it as 2, comma, 3, comma, 3. So that just solved that right there for me. Um, and the reason that seems so much easier than probably what we've done in the past uh, few examples is because I'm letting you use your calculator to find that inverse. If you had to find the inverse by hand and do the matrix multiplication by hand, this would be about the same um, intensity, I guess, of diff or difficulty as the ones before this. Um, so let's go on to some word problems. Um, one is fitting a parabola to three points, determine A, B, and C so that the points negative 1, 5, 2, negative 1, and 3, 13 are on the graph of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So what is happening here is um, they're telling us that if x is negative 1, then y is 5, or f of x is 5. And so what we can do is we can actually plug this in, plug in our x's. So a times negative 1 squared plus b times negative 1 plus c, that has to equal 5. Then I can do the same thing for f of 2 equals negative 1, which is our second point a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c equals negative 1. Then I do that with the third point. Okay, now we're actually going to have to um, figure out a way to solve this. I kind of like to use the way that we just did because we've only done it once now. So um, our coefficient matrix, if we have A, B, and C, well, A, the number in front of A is actually going to be, this is going to be like 1A minus B plus C, right? Because this negative 1 becomes a positive. So this will be 4A plus 2B plus C. This one's going to be 9a plus 3b plus c. So now that should make it easier to write our coefficients. So 1, negative 1, 1. 4, 2, 1. 9, 3, 1. There's our coefficients. This is matrix A. We're going to times that by, we wouldn't have x, y, and z here. We actually have a, b, and c. That equals our right hand sides, side, whatever, 5, negative 1. 13. So in our calculator, we're going to end up doing the inverse of matrix A times matrix B, and that'll give us the answer. So second matrix, we're going to go over to edit, and I'm just going to use the matrix I used a second ago. So this is going to be, I don't want it to be a 1, a 3 by 3 still. And then 1. <laughs> negative 1, um, 1, 4, 2, 1, 9, 3, 1. And then you go in and edit the other matrix. So this is 5, 
negative 1, 13. And the, the great thing about this is because the last thing I did was a inverse times b is I can just press enter and look, that's our new answer. 4, negative 6, 5, negative 5. Last example, we have that Daniel has 74 coins consisting of nickels, dimes, and quarters in his coin box. It tells us the total value is 885. And if the number of nickels and quarters is four more than the number of dimes, find how many of each coin Daniel has in his coin box. Well, the number of each has to add up to 74. So we can start off with this equation. Then we have an equation for the value of each. So a nickel is worth five cents, a dime is worth 10 cents, a quarter is worth 25 cents, and together they add up and give us 885. The last sentence tells us our last equation we need. The number of nickels plus the number of quarters is four more than the number of dimes, which we can rearrange into n plus q minus d equals four. Let's set up our um, matrix so that we can do it on the calculator. Oh, I put these in the wrong order. That should be D and that should be Q. And then we put this into the calculator. So, I already put it in. You go to second matrix, go over to edit. There is your matrix, and then you go second matrix and you edit the second one. There is that, and then you quit. And since the last thing I did was A inverse times B, I just press enter. I have that he did um, 22 nickels, 35 dimes, and 17 quarters.